Are you looking for an agile business requirements document? Perhaps something just like this. Well, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to create this document from scratch, be showing you all the fields you need to capture and also sharing some recommendations for the content you want to include. Now, if you do want to save yourself some time, I have made this pre-built, pre-formatted document template available for instant download. There will be a link in the description down below if you did want to pick that up. And you'll see there's lots of placeholder content as well to help you capture the right information. Nevertheless, let me now walk you through building this document from scratch. So the first thing that I'd recommend that you do is just give yourself a nice project name content area. So I've just typed in project name. Now you'll notice here I'm doing this in Microsoft Word. You can do this in any word processor that suits you. It could even be in a specific tool. I'm going to put this at 48. And again, I'm going to be using Calibri. It's a nice professional font, but you don't have to use that necessarily. You could use a different font to suit your needs. And when it comes to the colors as well that I'm going to be using, I'm going for something very clean and professional, but you can use your company branding and colors if you wanted to. So the first thing I want to do here is putting project name. So I just wrote that out. I've made that size 48 and I've put it down a couple of lines. Underneath, I'm going to specify exactly what this document is in a somewhat smaller font. So I'm going to say agile business requirements document. Ideally, we want this all in one line. So that looks good like that. Then there's a content area, area here for where you could put your company name, your company address. This may or may not be required, especially if you're working internally, but it's sometimes useful just to put, especially if you're working with external companies. I'm also going to put somewhere for the document version. So we're going to type that in there. And a good way of kind of doing that is something like this. So this is obviously the first ever installment, but as you, if you made revisions or you wanted to make changes, you would literally change this as, as you go along. Now I'm going to make this a bit smaller. So I'm going to make this down to about 14. I'm going to unbold it as well. Now, the other thing I'd recommend with document versions is you have somewhere to store your version history. So what I'm going to suggest you do here is so insert table, and then I'm going to suggest a, we'll go with, uh, da, 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 this for now. We might have to make some ch some changes along the way. Now I did so I did insert table and I did I think it was a let me do that again actually just so you can see it insert table. I did an eight by oh, let's do eight by five for now. So I just hovered over here eight by five. Now in the first one I'm going to select all those cells. So left click here and drag all the way across. Then I'm going to right click and click merge cells. I'm then going to go here and I'm just going to type in version history. Bold that. Then I'm going to say here version. Then I'm going to say approved by. Now this, whenever you want to make some changes, uh, revision date, then you should fill this fill this out if you changed the original document. So this just gives you somewhere to document all of that. Description of change, and that even could be is if you wanted to. But let's just leave it at that for now. And author. So I've created too many columns here. So what I'm going to do is select all of these and hit backspace, shift cells left. Okay. And I'm going to make that I go out like that. And that like that. No, let's do that one like that. Let's make these a bit bigger. So let's make that like that. Let's do that. Hover over there, drag across. There we go. Now I'm going to put these in bold and I'm going to put this in a nice, uh, I'm going to look for a, a suitable, so I'm on the table design here. I'm going to look for a suitable style just to make this kind of look quite nice. Uh, let's go with, let me see if I can find one. Let's go with this one for now. I'm going to bold that. And then I'm just going to put this in a darker gray. So I'm going to go home in the fill, in the fill here. We'll go for this darker gray. You can put this text to white as well. Make that pop. So put this all in white. Bold that. And then this looks pretty good. We could actually put this in a slighter, lighter gray as well. And there we go. So we've got this now. Let's make that a little bit. There we go. Let's make that a little bit like that. Cool. Like this. Lovely. So now we've got an area for the version history. So now it's on to the core elements of this agile business requirement document. So I'm going on to the next page here. Now, the first thing you're going to want to capture is the executive summary. So I put number one, executive summary. You want this right at the top. I'm going to bold this out. 
and I'm going to select, move this up to font size 18. Now I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this pretty much for the rest of this document. I'm going to click insert table and I'm going to press one by one. And then all I'm going to do is drag this down. And that's our content area for the executive summary. So basically what you want to put in here is a concise overview of the, the purpose of your business requirements document. You want to include a snapshot of the project's goal, scope, current and proposed processes, business drivers, and key functional requirements. Ultimately, you want to address these two key questions. What is the goal of this document and who is the intended audience? So that's number one. Number two is the project description. Now, pretty self-explanatory this. Basically, what's the purpose of the project? What's the solution you're hoping to achieve? What are the challenges you face? Why do you need to do this project? So all I did there was type number two and then write product description. I've then selected this, control C and control V. Oh, I'm kind of selected that properly. Select this, copy, control, uh, didn't like that. Let me try it again. It didn't like my, I want to copy this table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do that and control V and I'll just wipe that out. So then we've got project description. Now in third place, we're gonna to want to have, or number three, I should say, project scope. So what you're looking to include here is essentially what's in scope and what isn't in scope. So what's, what's covered and what isn't covered by this project. And it's great to have like a little table here. So insert table, we're gonna have a four by two like this. This is where we can have in scope. And this is where we can store out of scope. Put that in capital. I'm gonna make these a bit smaller. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna make these small like this. And I do 14, unbold those. And I actually want to, I'm gonna merge these. So I'm gonna click here and click merge. I'm gonna do the same for this. Merge, right click, merge, and then drag this down like this, just to give us more content area. Actually, we'll bold those. I think that makes more sense. In fact, let's put a shading in or a fill. So if I go here, let's go with this like, like this. We could also even move these into the center if we wanted to like this. So on the home ribbon, we could do something like, uh, yeah, something like that. that. That would work quite well. So, but I'm gonna leave it off for now. So project scope. And then the next thing you're gonna to want to do is document the business drivers. So basically, why are you undertaking this project? So what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm just going to go for business drivers. And then we want a table here to document these. So I'm gonna go for insert table. Um, we can leverage a lot of copying and pasting in this, but for this particular table, I need something quite specific. So we're gonna have uh, two, and let's do, no, let's do two by five for now. Now this is just gonna be business driver. And this is going to be an explanation. And I'm gonna put both of those smaller, home. Let's go down to about there. I'm gonna bold those, let's get that gray again. And there we go. And I'm actually gonna make those a little bit smaller. We don't need those so big. And actually, let me put this on the next page just to make it easier to manipulate. Let's do that like that, perfect. Now we have business drivers. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna to want to include is current processes. So I'm gonna scroll up to here and I'm gonna, oh, I've selected that by mistake. I'm gonna select product description all the way down to get that content box as well, or that table. Control C, I'm gonna go down to here and I'm gonna press Control V. And now I'm just gonna change the text. So five, and that's gonna be current process. And here you're gonna basically want to document, you know, why, what is the primary issue that your project attempts to solve? You're gonna wanna put that in this content box here. You may want to use diagrams, flowcharts, or even other visuals to help illustrate your current process. Now, next up, self-explanatory, Control-V is gonna be the proposed process. So it's almost the flip of that. You know, what are you looking to, you know, what's the main issue you're looking to solve with this project? And you can leverage the same visuals or tools as the current process for this. That can make for uh, good content to include there. Next, we're gonna have a content area for functional requirements. So here you basically want to list all of your functional requirements showing how the current process addressed the issue and what is needed for the project success. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna include here is priority. So what is the priority of the project or pro what are the priorities of the project? I'm gonna make this smaller here. I'm actually gonna put this onto a new 
page just to make that there we go insert table we're going to have a let's just do a three by here for now i'm going to put value i'm going to put rating and i'm going to put description now here basically and let's put those in a gray just to keep the the continuity across our document basically what we're going to be putting in here is the value can be from one through to five and the rating can be you know critical high oh let's unbold that critical high important low and future and basically so I'm just putting this in as, as placeholder content so you understand what to include here. It's the description where you'd be pretty much explaining, you know, what, what's, what's, what's a priority essentially. So yeah, anything that's critical is essential for project success. Anything that's high, it's important, but can be emitted in a minimum viable product situation. Important adds value, but is not necessary for minimum vi viable product implementation. Low, nice to have, but not essential for a success future may be included in future releases or features so that's priority we then want to have a content error for requirements categories or or rick rsc now bear in mind sometimes i like to just build this out all first and then we'll just optimize the the formatting if you like so this isn't in sync with this at the moment in terms of size but we can always work on that after um, just bear that in mind. Now here, I'm going to copy this table here, control C, control V, and we're going to have ID, we're going to have requirement, and we're going to have priority. And we're also going to introduce a new column, right click here, insert column to the right, and we're going to put raised by. And we're going to put this as RC1, RC2, RC3, RC4 and RC5. Now what this is essentially doing here is just enabling us to detail the project's functional use by categorizing its requirements for clarity. So you can use this table to help with each requirement. They've got their own unique ID, details, priority, and the responsible person. And you can duplicate as needed for any additional categories. So that's number seven. I'm now gonna copy that here. That was a control C and this is non functional requirements okay now what i'm going to do here is just add in a i want to control c this and control v here we actually only need two two columns for this so i'm going to delete this column out select all of those and hit the backspace i'm then going to put id and then i'm going to put requirement now here we want nf1 nf2 nf3 NF4 and surprise, surprise, NF5. We're going to leave those as blank. But yeah, as you'd expect in this particular content area, you just want to list all of your non functional requirements or NFRs, if you like. Um, I should put that as that, sorry, or NFRs. Um, including features, system behavior, project characteristics, all that affect user experience. So then we want a content area for, let's copy this, so control C, control V. A content area number nine is financial statements. So this is obviously important um, or important to include the financial impact of the project. And you want that to be over the full project duration as well. Control C, number 10, we're going to include the costs and benefits. So here you just want to list every project cost and have some kind of cost benefit analysis. You also want to perhaps include proposed funding sources as well. So you can put that in this area here. So I'm gonna press Control, go down here, Control V. Then I'm going to want that was 10, wasn't it? Yeah, this is 11. And number 11, we're going to want to include resources. So just somewhere to document the resources that are required for your project. It could be personnel, hardware, software. It could be specific equipment, as an example. Another content area here, number 12. And this is going to be for schedule, timelines, 
and deadlines, as the name suggests. You want to have a content area for you to specify all of these things, you know, project mul project timelines, project deadlines, project milestones. You could also format it in some kind of table to suit your needs, but sometimes it can be useful just to include it like this. Assumptions at number 13. So let's just, I press control V there. I'm gonna rename this to assumptions and I'm gonna put this on the next page because we're getting cut off there. Yeah, basically you wanna list any assumptions, whether they're, you know, unconfirmed project factors that can help you to identify project risks down the line. At 14, what you might want to include is a glossary. So somewhere to store any acronyms that you may have used. So as an example, if you use the word MVP instead of, instead of minimum viable product, you could put that in here like this. So what I'd recommend that you do is we're looking for a two, so you're working for this one here, a, a two column table. So control V, and then in here you could put something like term slash abbreviation and then just an explanation so as i said there mvp it could be something like let me just get rid of all these quickly but if you notice a lot of these i'm just copying and pasting from the previous content areas that we created that just helps to create that kind of uniform look to your document and also speeds things up as well minimum viable that's that's an, that's that's an example of how you fill this out basically not visible viable and then at 15 and this is the last content area, believe it or not. We're gonna copy and paste this one. And 15 is an area to document your resources. So this could be, you know, any external links could be to websites or documents that you've referred to in this. So location, this could be something like, you know, website, and then that could be the domain or the of the of the website. But that is how to create an agile business requirements document. I like these content areas, they work really, really well. This is the base of the document and what you want to include. Of course, you can change this to suit your needs depending on you know the size of the tables, uh, the colors and things like that. But I really would leverage insert table and I'd use that functionality for a lot of these. I'd also, once I've built some of them, start to essentially you know, copy and paste to save yourself a little bit time, bit of time. But yeah, as I say, that's the template. Hope this video is useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. And that said, best of luck. I hope you have an excellent day.